Well, it's 12 p.m. here in Berkeley, uh, well, in, and in Oakland, uh, California. Welcome to Zooming In, weekly curatorial conversations from the Magnus Collection of Jewish Art, Jewish Art and Life at UC Berkeley. I'm Shil Gal Kuchavi, Assistant Curator, and joining me today is Francesca Spagnolo, our dear curator. Hi, Shir. Hi, Francesco. It's great to see you. Very good even, to see you. Even from a distance. Yes. Um, to get this going. We started yeah. last week, so but we're going on until December, so we're going to see one another uh, for, for a while. For a few weeks, yes. Nice. Good. It's nice. Uh, just to give a little bit of a household, uh, all participants have their cameras turned off, but you can interact with us in two ways today. Uh, on the lower bar of your screens, you can use the chat button to let us know of any technical difficulties and the Q&A button if you have any questions for us. We'll be presenting for approximately 20 minutes and leave a few minutes in the end to answer any of your questions. Every week, we'll be presenting research done on either one or several, several objects from our collection, alternating back and forth, to taking a lead on taking lead on these conversations. Thank you, Nat, our colleague who's helping us manage uh, this webinar today. As a just quick reminder, the Magnus Collection is one of the largest Jewish museum collections in the world and one of the top three in the United States. It is also the only one in the world associated with a major research university. So let's jump right in. Today, we'll be discussing a topic that feels very relevant to recent social unrest here in the United States and in many places around the world, human rights. We'll be doing it through the eyes of the artist Arthur Schick. This part of the research was prepared for our exhibition in real life, Arthur Schick, Art and Human Rights, that opened right before the pandemic forced us to shelter in place. We hope you'll have an opportunity to visit it in the future. And in the meantime, you can always visit it in our, on our website. Arthur Schick, a Jewish artist born in Łódź, Poland in 1894, developed an interest in visual art at a very young age and went to study in Paris. His life was influenced by the collapse of European democracies and the two world wars. In 1940, after living as a refugee in the UK, he immigrated to New York via Canada. Today, we'll be looking at his interpretation of minority rights in the United States through four issues that are prevalent in his work. Here are the four issues. First, we look at the promises of the American Revolution and the way that they were used in his works. Second, his involvement in the creation of a sense of outrage of the Holocaust in America. Third, is protecting and strengthening the concept of nationhood and national identity. And finally, we'll end by looking at his works dealing with American civil rights. Schick, uh, as hopefully you all know him, uh, became a Jewish household name uh, thanks to his Haggadah illustrations, which criticized the rise of the Nazi regime and created during early 1930s. Um, but there is a lot more, right? Uh, here. There is so much more, but That's since we're skipping we're today, right? Exactly. Uh, we'll... uh, he's very well known and, and, and our constituents uh, really know, know him, especially for this incredible Haggadah, which at the time was like, one of the most expensive books on the market and published when it was in exile. So it was, it was like a heroic yeah. uh, publication. Yeah. But his concerns for, for human rights and civil rights are really ongoing before, after the Haggadah, all the way to the end of his life, right? Absolutely. Um, and we'll be, and that is really our focus today. Uh, but we're happy to, to, to give you another presentation on the Haggadah in the future, maybe for Passover. So let's just jump in. The American Revolution is a, thing, is a theme that repeats itself in several important Schick works. We chose just a couple to show you today. This is one of 20 paintings in, of the series The Glorious Days of a Polish-American Fraternity that were exhibited in the 1939 World's Fair in New York. This is Tadeusz, Tadeusz Kosciuszko, and he was one of the men who fought alongside Benjamin Franklin's uh, people in the American Revolutionary War. Francesco, can I invite you to talk about the text that he's holding in, in his hand with us? Oh, yes, of course. Well, so uh, in this portrait, so as you were saying, one of the heroes of, of uh, and a Polish hero of the, of the American Revolution. And only, this is a letter that he wrote to Thomas Jefferson as he was leaving uh, America and going back to, to Europe. And, uh, and he left behind a, a sum of money and asked his friend Jefferson to sort of directed in a very specific way. And, uh, you know, we just uh, uh, 
uh, transcribed a little bit of the text, but it says, I hereby authorize my friend Thomas Jefferson to give African-American slaves their liberty in my name, teaching them to be defenders of their liberty and country, of the good order of society, and whatsoever may make them happy and useful. This was signed May 5th of 1798. The letter is longer, but this is kind of the, the the path the that we're, we're carving today and, and yeah. really thinking about what this meant. This was, this was done in 1938 before uh, uh, Arthur Schick came to the United States, although, although he had already covered the American Revolution earlier in his work. Exactly. And what, what this meant, essentially the idea that a great country and, and the American Revolution could protect civil rights for minorities. And, uh, and this is kind of the key of what we're presenting today, right? Yes, I think it's a... But, but Jefferson and, and the American Revolution stayed as a concern throughout uh, Schick's uh, production. So uh, all the way to the end of his, uh, his career, right? And mm -hmm. his life. Yes, it was cut short uh, in 1951, unfortunately. And this is, a, this is one possibly his last uh, work. We just lost it, if you oh, go back. Yes, of life. course. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's one of his last works. It's not his last work. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is very much an American work. He features an American GI. It, the, the theme here is fighting against the, this Korean dragon, the Korea War in, uh, in the early 1950s. But again, Jefferson's and, uh, and the, the fight against tyranny is, uh, is really the concern of, of his production and continues that way. Absolutely. Thank you, Francesco. I'm gonna continue in order to be mindful of, of our time because there is so much to say about these works. Uh, in wake of news reporting, the mass extermination of Jews in Europe in 1942, Ben Hecht, a Hollywood producer and screenwriter, wrote an article exposing Nazi crimes that was published in the Reader's Digest. He also co-authored a pageant called We Will Never Die that was performed in Madison Square Garden in March 1943 and then traveled to several cities across the US due to its success. The purpose of this event was um, to raise awareness of the Nazi crimes among Americans. And it was organized also by the Committee for the Jewish Army of Stateless Jews, led, led by the Zionist revisionist Peter Bergson. We have a short clip to show you from the pageant uh, when it was uh, produced in, uh, in the Hollywood Bowl. And afterwards, Francesco, if I could invite you to unpack this text that we have here on the, on the right. Let's just watch this quickly. I think, Sher, you may need to share your computer audio. Oh, dear. <laughs> I apologize. It's quite all right. I, I, I don't think I can replicate the audio, but it was kind of an, a speaker from 1943. This was the, the Hollywood World pr Production. Don't worry about the audio, but it's, it's just a little, a little glimpse of this. But, uh, you know, it was announcing this big production. It was actually gathering thousands of people. And the aim of this, and what we see on the left is Schick's artwork illustrating a poem by Ben Echt that had the same aim, was really to mobilize America and to share the outrage uh, for the Holocaust that was unfolding it was not called that way at the time, but uh, but uh, uh, it basically the news uh, by 1943. Uh, this is shortly before the 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 the, the Warsaw Ghetto uh, uprising, but the news were coming in, trickling in since fall of 42, and and they were really engaged in making sure that people across America were aware of what was going on. Uh, what we see on this, uh, on this uh, painting is, and, and this is important how we read the images of Arthur Schick, is a story that goes against the direction of the poem. The poem is read from top to bottom, and it's a ballad of the doomed Jews of Europe. And the, the narrative of the images goes from the bottom, bottom right, all the way around, we put a nice little arrow to follow that, to the, to the, to the top right. And it's, uh, it's uh, Jews threatened at the bottom left, threatened by, by, Nazi, by the Nazi army and persecuted and trying to make an emergency phone call to the United Nations at the top, but nobody's answering the phone. And death is uh, playing kind of like on the deck of the Titanic mm -hmm. uh, in a way. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's a way in which we read Arthur Schick and we're going to read more of his images that way as we move on. And I believe I fixed the video, so let's give it one quick trial.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're speaking to you from the Hollywood Bowl, which tonight is the scene of one of the nation's most spectacular pageants, titled We Will Never Die. This Manrit Memorial is dedicated to the two million civilian Jewish dead of Europe. This is the only performance to be given in Los Angeles. Written by Ben Hecht as a living testimonial of the suffering of the Jews and their hopes and achievements, the pageant has a special musical score by Kurt Weill, famous composer. Thank you. So we'll, uh, we'll jump right into this very important work that was also created in 1943 in New York, the Profundis. And, um, and we'll come back to it on... at the end of our presentation. But again, uh, what, what's interesting to us in, the, in this work is that it was again created to share the news and mobilize the public opinion uh, about uh, the Holocaust that was unfolding in Europe. And the largest common denominator in the audience that Schick and Benecht and others were trying to activate was Christianity, was the Christian majority. So what we have here is we have a, a, a Jewish Christ holding the, the, the Ten Commandments, the tablet of the law next to the, the Hebrew Bible, etc. cetera. But uh, the quotation from Psalms here is in Latin, not in Hebrew. This is a work for the, for the masses. And so we have Latin and English on the, on the text and we highlighted, and so you, you brought it out on the, on the left of the, of the screen, uh, yeah, yeah. how the character of Job, Job is pronouncing the last words of Jesus on the cross. Eli, Eli, yeah. lama sabachthani, why, why did you abandon me? And so the, the, the appeal to the Christian majority is really a key in this type of production. So we had a Passover Haggadah that was very much targeted at, at uh, Jewish life. Yeah. Uh, in, in, a, in a very innovative way. But in this case, we're really looking at uh, artwork that's designed for most of this audience to, to grasp. Yeah, for a broader audience. And now that he's living in the United States, I think it's part of the, the plan, not only to, to make people aware of the Holocaust and the atrocities, but also to grow his own audience, um, which is something we saw in other works. Um, Schick, who was born in Poland and later immigrated through Canada to the United States, intertwined the idea of national identity in many of his works. Here, we chose just a couple to start with uh, the, the charter of the study of college, which is a charter given to Jews in 1264 by Boles Boleslas the Pius. Um, Francesco, I'll, I'll let you take it from here if you don't yes. mind. Discuss well, so, the little so emblem. This, this is really a legal manifesto of protecting minority rights in, in the heart of, uh, of uh, Europe. And, uh, and Schick goes back over and over again in representing nationhood in a variety of ways, but it's really nationhood as a protector of minority rights. The idea is that nationhood offers an umbrella that protects minorities, protects everyone. And this was the great lesson of the great refugee crisis post-World War I. And this is what this work is really about in, in some ways. It's not just about history. It was a very successful work in, it, in its own right. And the heraldry that Schick develops really serves the same purpose. On the, on the right of the screen, we have a sort of corporate identity for the legion, the Polish legion that was embedded in the Allied forces during World War II. Uh, but he goes back always to that theme. Uh, but he, he also uh, characterized nationhood by uh, creating stamp designs for other countries. He, the, the whole project was to celebrate through stamps uh, the, the countries that participated in the, in the United Nations. And, and then eventually he also celebrated the State of Israel. So this is a 1948 uh, design for the State of Israel. And what we see, and we brought out some elements, is that we see at the, at the center, top and bottom, how uh, the, the core characters of the Jewish story at the top are matched by the new character of the Jewish story in Israel. So soldiers and farmers are uh, equal forces. And in a way, in, in, the, in kind of the visual language of this artwork, uh, the core, the basis of the success of this story. And the, the four figures at the, at the corners are, are historical figures, David and Solomon, Bar Kokhba and Ezekiel, essentially warriors and kings and prophets. Uh, the idea is that uh, civil rights need to be protected. Nationhood protects them, but has to do it actively. So in this context, armies are important. 
And yes, in a way, the same we can see also when, when Arthur Schick celebrates in the same context of designing stamps, uh, celebrates the United States. Um, at the bottom, we see a, 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 the Navy and the Army as core protectors. And, but protecting what? We see in the top uh, roundels that you highlighted in green, uh, we see uh, Native Americans and descendants of slaves. So the theme that we encountered when he was uh, reflecting on Thomas Jefferson and Kosciusko and the, and the American Revolution comes back over and over again. And also the, the, other, the other quadrants in this, in this work are, are about uh, uh, progress, technological progress. Oh, yes. And this also is ensured by the protect, uh, protection of rights. In a way, this is a strong message that's, uh, that's part of this. So we see here from the Hoover Dam, Dam to the Pony Express, we see a variety of, of achievements of America, uh, but they're really established upon the protection of the right of all to be part of America. And we should also mention in the Pony Express that Schick, uh, that Schick brought in the invention of the airplane and the and the, the train, which uh, we also see in other of his works. So here he really mixes up the uh, the Pony Express, the of uh, you know early twentieth century, with the with the airplane and modern inventions. Um, Schick was very proud to live in America, and he ad he addressed the injustice towards uh, minority groups in several of his works. Francesca, I'm going to invite you to walk us through these and their, and discuss their references. Um, Please, and I'll join you in, the, in a bit. Yeah, well, in, in designing a poster, we have it on the left uh, for the New York State's Committee on Discrimination and Employment. What it's showing is showing, um, in a way, different ethnic groups, whites, African-Americans, and Jews, the character at the, at the, on the right has, has a six-pointed star on it, on, his, uh, on the pocket of his uh, work uniform, collaborating in the war, in the war effort. The idea that, uh, this collaboration in the army should eventually be brought out into society is very important. And so he does with a cartoon that's on, on the right of our screen uh, uh, in, entitled Racial Humiliation. It's part of his uh, work, as, as it was a book that he published uh, a couple years later, in, I think in 46, called Ink and Blood, um, um, where he was not only denouncing crimes, especially crimes in World War II, but uh, Schick was also showing how these crimes could be addressed. In this case, a, an African-American GI arresting a Nazi officer. And uh, the idea of racial humiliation in this case, it's really a, 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 a stab at racism. So that racism leads to humiliation. Uh, but uh, Arthur Schick went even further, and this is a very important work that's part of the uh, uh, Arthur Schick collection, the Toby family Arthur Schick collection at the at the Magnus. All of the works that we're presenting today are part of, uh, of that collection and are on display at the Magnus. We hope to reopen that uh, exhibition very soon, as soon as the pandemic ends. In the, in the background that's behind me, this is one shot of the gallery. So many of these works are displayed in the gallery that you see uh, behind me. Uh, but this, works is, this the work we're seeing, we're looking at right now is, is, is extremely poignant. Also, once again, because of the appeal to Christianity. So denunciation of lynching, exposure of crimes, in this case, the crimes of the Ku Klux Klan, we see the, we see the hooded figures in, in the back. And uh, the declaration that each lynching is a national disaster is not mm -hmm. that essentially that racism is a problem of everyone, not just of the persecuted minorities. Uh, the message is very, very clear, but equally clear is that the quotation at the top of the cartoon do not forgive them, O oh Lord, for they do know what they do. In this case, Arthur Schick evokes directly the Gospels. So Luke 23, 34 is the, is the source for this quotation, which is, of course, twisted in, in his language. Mm -hmm. uh, but this appeal to the great Christian majority, and it's hard not to think about echoes in, in our society today, um, um, but appeal to Christian majority is really a key to this production. The idea that uh, Arthur Schick was able to leverage the challenges of minority rights going back to uh, the interwar period, uh, early 20th century Eastern Europe, and uh, through that lens understand and try to understand and share an understanding of America is very, very powerful. And so for us to, to consider this uh, today 
uh, is a way to really understand the production of this artist far beyond the general understanding that's been, uh, that's been shared and focused on his Jewishness as a, as a minority and not as a tool to speak to great themes. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And thank you, our colleague, Matt. Um, please uh, join us again next Friday for another talk. And before we leave you today, um, oh, I apologize. And next fri Friday, we'll be talking about graduating in style, ethnic diversity at the University of Padua. Um, you can email us with more questions or comment to magnus at berkeley.edu on the bottom. And please send us, um, please give us a couple of minutes so we can just quickly look at the questions that we have and start answering. Um, so we already have one question here and, and uh, thank you for presenting and, and running the slideshow today, uh, yep. by the way. Um, we, uh, we have a few questions also, actually some private ones in, in, uh, in chat. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll start from there and then I'll go yes, to the q and uh, But uh, uh, somebody's asking, first of all, uh, sort of public announcement, is the Magnus open? The Magnus is open online. The entire UC Berkeley campus is, uh, is closed, is closed to the public. We're teaching online. We're doing research online. Uh, we have limited access to, to facilities or we do have access to the facilities. And um, so we are open this way. We are presenting every week. What we're presenting today is part of a series. So every week at noon for about half an hour, we'll be presenting and collecting and answering your questions. Uh, we have about 80 people uh, uh, registered today. So it's, uh, it's again a good group. And somebody's asking, uh, actually not asking, recommending that we present this program to a larger audience. Um, I also want to, again, remind everybody uh, how you can go to our website and uh, uh, it's magnus.berkeley.edu and find out a lot more about Arthur Schick, about the topics that we present. Uh, a question is whether there are any works in the collection that illustrate Jewish mystical symbolism. Um, last week we presented about amulets. Uh, mm -hmm. Arthur Schick uses Jewish symbols and uh, some of those symbols which are religious symbols are also connected to mysticism. Uh, definitely the six pointed star which is a Jewish mystical symbol, not just Jewish but a Jewish mystical symbol, but also kinds of symbols that have to do with ritual. The, the crown of the Torah, mm -hmm. uh, the Torah as a crown is very much connected to Jewish mysticism and, and the idea of the royalty of the Hebrew Bible is, is very important. And, um, and um, um, Somebody's asking uh, whether uh, we can speak about the lack of women in Schick's work. I don't know, Sherry, if you want to take that. Um, yes, we, we did notice this um, as we were looking, as we were working through the wonderful uh, Toby family Arthur Schick collection uh, that the Magnus uh, received uh, in 2017. And there is a lack of women. And you might not call it a lack. You might want to, to consider the women that appear in very specific um, some often in traditional roles, but not always. Um, I think Schick is in a way typical to, to how he, he saw himself in uh, working with, um, in looking back at traditional, uh, traditional paintings, traditional manuscripts, where you often, often find the, the fierce men and, and male characters. And I think there is definitely a lack that we're still uh, working on researching. So thank you. I hope this somewhat answered the question. Um, um, somebody's also asking whether our presentations are uh, recorded. recorded. Yes, and yes, they are. Absolutely. And, uh, they are, and they're available, uh, I yeah, think. They're going to be posted. Uh, each presentation is going to be posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, so there is a way to pick it up again. And again, what we're trying to offer each week is just some focused ideas, focusing on specific artworks. And, uh, and uh, if some of our, uh, the people in our audience actually want to learn more, they have ways to do it and to reach, uh, reach us. Again, magnus.berkeley.edu, magnus at berkeley.edu are the ways to, uh, to reach us. Uh, but um, again, we're sharing uh, video recordings and, uh, and happy to do so. Each week is a different theme. So, yes. so as next we're week. highlighting next week, we're, we're mm -hmm. talking about a, 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 about a university diploma from Italy in the, in the 17th century. 
uh, a diploma that went on exhibition in Venice a few years ago when Venice, Venice was marking the 500th anniversary of the, of the establishment of the Jewish ghetto, the first ghetto, the first Jewish quarter to be called a ghetto in, in history. Uh, so we are, we are grateful for, for all the questions and uh, most of our audience is writing, we're getting a lot of uh, messages in private chat. Yes. Uh, and they want more. So, so we'll do it okay. again we'll with more. pleasure. <laughs> Somebody's actually uh, remembering this exhibition from when it was on Russell Street. That's a little hard. I think Arthur Schick was displayed on Russell Street in many different ways. So that's the, the older Magnus, not the one, the Magnus at UC Berkeley. This exhibition, the one you see on, on behind my shoulders, behind my head mm -hmm. uh, today in the gallery, opened at er, early this year in 2020, opened in, in, at the end of January of 2020. And, uh, had to close as the whole building closed down because of the because of the um, because of the uh, pandemic. But the exhibition is still there and it's waiting uh, to be reopened. Uh, we check on its status every week, and uh, we're just, of course, like everyone else, hoping for this to be over soon. And you can find a lot of these images and information online, as Francesco mentioned, both on our website. On, uh, on our digital platform and our online inventory is also available where you can read more about the Toby family Arthur Schick collection and the almost 450 works that are part of that collection. So thank you very much. Do we have any last questions? We yes, we have to... a couple more questions. One so is again, before... the technical one, whether Schick works have been digitized. Yes. Yes, so... and they are available online. So again, navigate to our website and you will find this and a lot more. And uh, are prints available for purchase? We don't actually sell prints. That's not part of what we do. Uh, but uh, as somebody else is, uh, is, uh, is uh, um, asking uh, whether, well, the, what do we have? We have, somebody's actually saying we need more of Schick. Absolutely. And Absolutely. We're, we're doing everything we can to share it with you. Mm -hmm. And somebody's asking for a talk on the, on the Haggadah. On the Haggadah. We actually so. presented a talk on the Haggadah uh, last year, last year part of the yeah. series, our colleague from, uh, from the Graduate Theological Union, uh, um, uh, Dina Aronoff, presented a talk on the, on the Passover Haggadah around Arthur Schick. And, uh, and that's also archived on our YouTube channel, on our website. Yes, Somebody's asking, where is, your, where is your YouTube channel? Again, go to magnus.berkeley.edu and uh, navigate to just the left side of the front page and you will see a link to YouTube and a link to all kinds of other online resources. Our collection is are really widely available online and we have an incredible visitorship there. So thank you again for thank joining us. Thank you everyone. Today. And, and uh, join uh, us next week yes, at 12, coming back 12 PM. Week. Zooming in. Yeah. Thank you, Francesco. Bye-bye everybody. Thank you. <laughs>